our next presentation. You can uh, go ahead and switch to his slide. It's Ken from the PSA. And he was kind enough to send us a picture of himself as a very scary vampire. <laughs> uh, the PSA has been with us for a long time, um, but Ken has um, been in charge of both revamping their strategy as they've done it over the years. And so it's going to be a really good uh, way to see the marriage of online and offline components of their program. So thanks, Ken. Take it away. Um, clicker. Okay. Thank you. Um, so just a very quick introduction. I'm Ken. Uh, I work with PSA. Um, I've been with the company for about 13 years already. Um, maybe just a quick show of hand. How many of you have heard of PSA? Okay, for the rest of you, don't worry. I won't tell Jessica you didn't read the event brochure. <laughs> All right. So anyway, I will spend the first few slides just introducing the company, give you all a sense of where we are as an organization. We are actually not such a new organization, but actually we are uh, undergoing some form of transformation in the, in the last few years. And really then uh, talk a little bit about some of the innovations we have done and uh, some of the pillars of innovations that we have actually put in place in order to help uh, innovation happen. So really trying to see uh, how we can marry the online and offline version of uh, innovation. So without further ado, I jump straight in. I'm going to um, try to run really fast because I think we are slightly behind schedule and um, being a port operator, um, <laughs> you know, we get it all the time. We get it all the time. So um, I'm going to... So, so that's where we are, really a leading global port group around the world. I think we are quite famous for our port in Singapore, but actually um, we do operate quite a number of terminals around the world. I'll show you in a bit. Some facts, we are handled about 81 million TEUs. Anybody understand TEUs? Okay, a TU is essentially a 20-foot equivalent unit, so a 20-foot container box. I think in US, you um, like things bigger, so you all use a lot more 40-footers and some 45. <laughs> Right. Um, group revenue of about 4 billion Singapore dollars, um, 38,000 staff globally, and uh, one, one, one of our key uh, achievements is really um, we run the world's largest transshipment hub in Singapore. Um, it uh, handled about 36 million TUs last year. So um, transshipment, maybe I just uh, take a quick uh, explanation. A transshipment hub is really like a transit point for your aircraft, except that these boxes they don't walk to the next location on their own. So you actually have to do it for them. So you're actually moving boxes on and off the ship in that sense. So we handled the world's busiest transshipment hub in Singapore. Um, we started off in 1964 as the port of Singapore Authority. So back then we were both the authority as well as the terminal operator. And that's also where we got our name. In 1997, there was a decision made that says, hey, um, let's split this. So um, the authority and the regulatory functions actually went to a company or an organization called the Maritime Port Authority. And then we continued with the name PSA. So now if you ask me what PSA stands for today, PSA is a name, it's no longer an acronym. I used to be the comms team, we've tried it for 20 years, but we still get visitors from overseas coming to us and when the first thing they visit us is this ah, part of Singapore Authority. So if there's one thing you can take away from today, if you ever visit us in Singapore, we are PSA, not the part of Singapore Authority anymore. <laughs> So um, our globalization journey, I just want to highlight a few points. As you can see, we've been uh, growing throughout the years. Um, 1964 is where we started, but really when we actually started uh, going overseas was when we became a commercial entity, and that's in really in 1996. So for the first uh, 32 years, we were very much Singapore in that sense. But uh, since 1996 to now 2019, a good uh, 23 years, I think we have done quite well in expanding overseas. And I just maybe since I'm here, I should point out our latest acquisition, which is in Philadelphia. So our first terminal in the United States. <laughs> So um, very much here we are across the world. Um, as you can see, uh, we do cover uh, mainly coastal, but we do have uh, inland rail locations as well. So um, now to uh, focus more on something that's uh, more of the topic today, uh, innovation. Um, well, PSA, we've, uh, I, I see we, I would say that we have gone through three stages of innovation in the last um, however long it's been. Let me see, 1964, you do the math, okay? So. <laughs> Really, from the first few years, when we were mainly Singapore, then at that point of time, really trying to build an efficient hub port, uh, something where you know we can do catch-up service, like what we're trying to do now. 
Um, then the next one is really then, um, as we started to expand overseas, then how do we cascade some of the learning, some of the best practices to all these locations around the world? Bearing in mind, every location has its own regulatory concerns, its own local practices, its own labor union. So how do we actually do that? And then more recently, actually, we've been saying, okay, um, we are a port, but uh, we are also a key player within the complex supply chains of today. So um, um, previously, uh, when our NASA friends actually talked about silos, and the logistics industry seems to be somewhat the same, where everybody has been innovating and optimizing within themselves. But so for us, I think we run a pretty good port. Uh, I would like to think so. <laughs> but um, at, at the end of the day, is, does that actually benefit the end customer? And that's something that we have been asking ourselves. And in the last two years, we have been actually looking a little bit up and a little bit down to see the people that we actually connect with, to see how we can actually work with them on some solutions in order to um, better, better meet the end customer needs in that sense. So um, innovation is actually not new to PSA. We actually have two systems. One of them is called Podnet. Uh, it's really a pod community system. I mean, for you now, if you look at it, you say, yeah, it's just another port community system. But this was actually developed in 1984. So at that point of time, it was the first B2B nationwide port community system in the world. Right? Four years later, we actually launched what we call a computer integrated terminal operating system. So as our business grew within Singapore, we needed one system to be able to Give the, the, the give coordinated instructions to the driver, to the crane operator, to the to the ship, and to really then ensure all of this comes together. So then after after a while, we actually managed to uh, link up Portnet and CTOS, such that actually a lot of the documentation that you submit, whether it's through customs, uh, port approvals, and all that, everything is then done seamlessly. And bear in mind, this is still in 1984, uh, or 1980s in that sense, right? Um, what we also did in the, so, so innovation continued in the 1990s, I think also partially born out of necessity. We actually developed the world's uh, first uh, flow-through gate. What happens is as the tra truck driver drives in, he scans, his, he scans his biometric, we check the driver is correct, the truck is correct, the container weight is correct, and the container number is correct and we allow the container into the port. And all this is done within 25 seconds. Uh, so if you ever have a chance to visit Singapore and you actually visit, uh, you actually visit the, the older, or the, what we call the city terminals, you actually see that it's actually right next to our central business district. So I'm sure nobody will be too happy if you have a queue of trucks actually waiting there. Um, then uh, we continued uh, on the road of automation in the year 2000s. We actually started deploying a remote yard crane. So really then um, allowing people to sit in a, in a nice office environment while, the, while they operate the cranes uh, out in the yard. And I think that um, helped us with our retention, but it also um, made the job a little bit more sexy. And you can see it's really like playing a video game in that sense. <laughs> And then um, in 2015, we actually started uh, with uh, really going full automation. So some of our yards now are fully automated. We still do have people in the control center who will then be able to take over, but they do more exception handling in that sense. Um, so um, just a very quick one. These are some of the other automation features that we are looking at. Uh, I think one of the one of the new ones we're looking at is really then this uh, AGV or what we call automated guided vehicle. So this means that um, it's like having a bus take you from point A to point B without a driver and all this will be automated in that sense. So uh, no longer do we have to worry about somebody uh, getting caught in congestion because everything will be then centrally controlled. Um, so uh, how have we done? I think in Singapore we are still continuing to do quite well. Uh, we uh, achieved um, uh, recently a growth uh, gross birth productivity record, which means really means the number of moves on board the vessel that you do of uh, 465. That means that when the vessel is in port, every hour you actually handle 465 boxes on that particular vessel. Um, for those of you who are not so familiar with the industry, I think uh, three years ago, hitting 200 was difficult. Um, I think last two years, uh, hitting 300 was still difficult, and I think we managed to hit uh, 465, but this is also with co close collaboration with our customer in that sense. 
So um, we've managed to also cascade some of these best practices overseas, but I mean, India, we, we did hit a new productivity record, but in, the, in, in India, 175 moves per hour was considered a new record, at the, and is, this is uh, quite recently today. And then, of course, uh, trying to upskill some of our terminals, like in uh, Gdangs, in order to handle some of the largest mega vessels today. So the MSC Gulsun that you see actually called in uh, Gdangs is actually um, 23,000 uh, TU and above uh, in terms of ca carrying capacity. So this is where it starts to get tricky, and this is what I was talking about in the last two years. We said, hey, can we look up and down the chain a little bit more from the port ecosystem and say, is there anything we can do for some of our cargo owners and how can we serve them better? Uh, we talked to many of them. Um, we, we see uh, two, uh, two key concerns. One is really how can we cooperate with um, the people in the adjacent space better? So let's say truckers, shipping lines, how do we pass information? How do we uh, coordinate operations a lot better? But the second part is then really um, on the digital side because a lot of things are still done very via manual documents. So then really uh, creating whether we can create some sort of a digital platform in order to help us smoothen things out for them. So we have actually launched a digital platform called uh, Callista about a year and a half ago. Uh, so those are some of the those are some of the solutions that we have actually come up with. But we do recognize that in the uh, in the recent few years things are changing. We are starting to have to look out, look at look at partnering people a little bit more. Uh, we've done well in optimizing within ourselves, but then really how can we reach out to the the people around us? And that's when our group CEO actually has launched our innovation vision for us. So it was launched in 2017 and we say it's a five-year program and we want to say um, as an individual, what kind of behaviors and beliefs are you supposed to have? Uh, this includes maybe um, ex being externally focused, being uh, spontaneous in your innovation. Um, and then as leaders, how do you actually support some of these innovation drivers? Do you value them? Do you share ideas with your team? How do you cascade them? And then, of course, then uh, how all of this actually fits into Singapore to PSA as an um, entire enterprise, really, then uh, whether we can be recognized for uh, innovation or and really then innovation having a visible, visible impact on the business itself. So some of the pillars that we have actually put in place in order to enable or achieve this um, achieve this uh, innovation vision. Uh, we've classified them broadly under four categories, really culture, awards, learning, and outreach, and collaboration in that sense. So I'm going to go first into culture. I mean, after all, this is an idea scale uh, conference, so I have to talk about our platform. And our platform is called ICANN. No, I did not name it, uh, just because my name is Ken, but no. <laughs> Uh, it's called I can to, to really sh show the spirit that uh, you can do it in that sense. And um, yeah, I know the name Ken in innovation gets thrown around a lot. Um, we always say we must have a can do attitude. And people come up to me and say, can do. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know why, maybe that's why I'm here presenting as well. <laughs> Yeah, so we have we so so we call our platform internally I can uh, what we do is we actually um, as you know our business we are actually spread out across um, many geographical locations and every location is really then um, on its own really trying to operate to um, optimize their own operations and try to do better so we actually do separate our our we actually do separate our campaigns by individual business units. We also do have uh, group-wide uh, campaigns, um, and we also do have uh, very uh, specific function-wide campaigns. And so for the individual campaigns by the business units, then we actually get an innovation representative to actually be the moderator because he knows when the idea comes out, who, who best to channel it to. Um, for the domain-specific uh, the domain specific campaigns, that one is actually done by the subject matter experts. So we do have like data scientists who will say, okay, I want everybody to share whatever they can ideas on data analytics. So some of the data analytics problems, and then we create a campaign for them and they will moderate it themselves. And then we have certain global campaigns, which is um, trying to drive certain ideas that we actually want to uh, do. So how have we done? Okay, in terms of numbers of users going up over the years, so we've been about three years 
three full years here because uh, 2016 we only started in September. Um, it has been going up, but um, that is also natural because as an organization, we've been growing and we've also been um, trying to onboard more of our terminals. I think at this point of time, we have about 25 out of the 50 units uh, on board. Um, you can see that ideas and um, votes tend to fluctuate. I think it also depends on the popularity of certain, uh, certain um, campaigns that are run. Uh, again, uh, I agree that uh, anything to do with photos, people love it. So we actually uh, ran a photo campaign where people are, are asked to creatively take their workplace. And uh, I think the results on that one were actually um, quite encouraging in that sense. Um, but for 2018, maybe just to share some of our numbers. So um, 11,000 accounts, 400 over active users. Um, so it's about 4% um, in that sense. And the number of ideas implemented 6%. So I think the number of active users, I think is something that uh, we, will, we are hoping to um, hear from you at any point of time, uh, maybe during lunch, tea break or whatever, how we can drive this up, uh, given our mixed workforce in that sense. Uh, but I think um, after hearing from uh, our recent uh, sharing, uh, I think 6% uh, of ideas implemented seems pretty okay. Uh, initially, I was a little bit worried, to be honest. <laughs> so other than that, uh, in order to try to drive a culture of innovation, we actually do have a group innovation fund, which we have actually set aside a million dollars. Um, this allows people to say, hey, if you have an idea, you bring it up to us, you apply, and we will actually fund it for you. You can go and test it and uh, bring it to reality yourself. Uh, you can, you, if you need help, you can get a team. So what we have also done is we have also uh, used some good ideas from Ideascale and said, when we have these ideas here, we think they're good, and we actually offer them to other business units. So, so say you can also apply to use these funds to actually test ideas that were implemented in other business units. So cross, cross uh, implementation in that sense. So very much uh, done with the culture. Now I just go into uh, awards and recognition. I think uh, we do have um, an, uh, a group innovation awards um, separately running uh, on the side. So this one is really then uh, a once a year campaign where it's uh, not done on ideal scale, but really the, the groups are actually uh, asked to fill up a full business case on why you think this one will work. The evaluators are really two of our senior management as well as two of our board members. And then they will actually classify them whether it's platinum, gold, silver, bronze, and consolation for those of uh, who have uh, bothered to submit, as long as they're not really too bad in that sense. Um, of that, 38% uh, of the ideas that were actually bronze and above has also been implemented. So this is uh, separate from the 6% from idea scale. So we actually have been uh, doing quite a lot of new things. Um, on the idea scale side, we also do have awards for our people. So we do have uh, once a year, we do collect the top ideator award. I think uh, this one, um, speaks for itself. It's really the guy who has actually contributed the most ideas. So this guy will be rewarded with a plug during our once a year global uh, innovation webcast. And uh, so um, he will actually, uh, we actually have that. But then we realized that it's not just the ideators that are very key to this whole ecosystem. The next one is really then the power users. So, so these guys are what we call the influencers, right? So you get points for contributing an idea, voting, commenting, commenting on other people's ideas. So we actually have a point system in place and similarly once a year they also get awarded at that same uh, innovation webcast. So um, how do we then um, cascade the learning from all of these uh, innovative efforts uh, across the world? Well, ah, sorry, let me uh, touch on this one a little bit first. Um, so in order to help um, people become a little bit more innovative, uh, our group, uh, Human Resource Team, has actually created a tailor-made um, innovation program for innovation uh, leaders and some of our leaders as well. Why is it called Catfish Innovation? I think um, maybe if you go and Google uh, Catfish Effect, you will see uh, a, a quick snippet as to explain why it is. Uh, so I won't spend too much time on that. And then after that, we do run workshops where we actually gather people or subject matter experts globally from all around the locations to actually say, hey, these are some of the best practices. You can take them back with you. So we do have um, workshops all around the world in that sense. 
Um, so the last part, we're really then saying, okay, a lot of this is very internal focus. How do we actually reach out? So we do have uh, a venture capital arm called PSA Unbox. Uh, Unbox really trying to think out of the box in that sense. Well, uh, Unbox serves two functions. One function is really then it is really our external innovation arm to go and see what is out there in the startup space, really try to gather feedback, see what's going on. And actually then because they are aware of the needs within our organization, then try to marry the needs of two. So really try to bridge that gap in the second, in the first sense. In the second sense, we also do um, startup funding. Uh, we do uh, mentoring because um, the port industry is a little bit of a niche industry in that sense. So we do deploy some senior leaders, people with uh, tons of experience to help some of these people with ideas and startups to say, hey, can you share with them your experience in some of this and really then guide them and see whether some of these startups have worked. So those some of the ideas, some of the company names, there are some startups that we've either invested in or worked with. And all this um, that, uh, all this that uh, PSA Unbox uh, works with would not be possible or would, be, would have limited impact if you did not have somewhere to test it. So in Singapore, what we have done is we have actually carved out parts of our terminal into what we call the living lab. And so we will actually then provide some of these uh, startups with a live pod environment within which to actually test some of your technologies. And uh, of course, uh, this should not affect the normal productivity that we uh, deliver to our customers, but we actually do that. So that's all that I have. Actually, um, um, I think for us, we know that innovation is a journey. Uh, we're not there yet. Um, we hope with your help, we can get there faster and easier and quicker. But uh, I'm really happy and open to hear from any of you during any of the sessions if you have ideas on how we can boost our active user participation or any other comments you may have. Thank you.